Welcome to another Clifton Cameras review. We are here at the Slimbridge Wetland Center, a sanctuary for birds of all types. Uh, we've come here today to review the Panasonic G90. We weren't actually even aware that this camera was coming out. It just kind of landed on our desk this week. We're unsure, I'm not even sure when the camera's released. I think it comes out April 4th or 5th, you'll be able to purchase this camera. Um, what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna take a look around. Birds are the perfect subject matter for a fast firing micro four thirds camera. What I've brought with me is the 12 to 60 kit lens that this camera comes with. And I've also got the Panasonic 100 to 300 in my backpack. And on this micro four thirds camera with a two times crop factor, that's gonna end up turning into a 200 to 600 mil lens. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna take a look around. I think our first point of call is going to be the Kingfisher enclosure where I'm gonna get that long lens out. Uh, and we're going to take a look and see if we can see any of the birds up there. And then we'll make our way back to the front of the park and check out all the beautiful avian creatures on our way. All right. The G90 is a Micro Four Thirds camera, of course it's the successor to the G80 and it has a few upgrades from that model. It feels really good in hand and it has this vulcanized rubber grip all the way around it. Uh, we also have the noticeable addition now of white balance uh, exposure and ISO as physical buttons on the top of the camera in between the two front dials, which I like the use of. Um, Big things to now realize with this camera is the sensor has been upgraded from the previous 16 megapixel sensor on the G80 to a now 20.3 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, which I believe is the same sensor that we see on the G9 and the GH5. Um, that's, a, that's a big upgrade. There are also some processing upgrades that give us slightly better dynamic range, but it is still a micro four thirds camera. I know the ISO level has been extended to 51,200, but that is not necessarily, uh, that doesn't really reflect the, uh, the quality of the images that we might get when we're shooting at, at higher ISOs. It just means that that range has been extended a little bit. Uh, one of the key features on this camera that we now have is unlimited 4K and 1080p recording. So we're no longer bounded by the limits of that 20, is it 29.95 second uh, minute recording sort of, you know, uh, limit that you get on other cameras. Um, that's important because this camera is really, I think Panasonic have been working their way towards making probably the best sub 1000 pound mirrorless video camera uh, on the market. Unlike the previous model, we now have a mic jack um, on the top here, and we've also got the ability to listen to what we're recording with this headphone jack. I'm pretty sure the G80 didn't have the headphone jack, however, it did have the mic jack. So that is great. You're gonna be able to monitor your audio, and this camera is definitely designed to be a both photography and videography sort of camera for content creators and uh, you know entry level enthusiast photographers. Uh, so yeah, tilty flippy screen as well, invaluable uh, accessory when you're talking about making content. Uh, you can view yourself in the video uh, as it's recording right here, and the incredible dual IS in body image stabilization on this camera gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to recording, having stabilized footage, but also shooting sort of longer, uh, longer exposure images. I think we'll probably, and I'll try and demonstrate this later, but I'll probably be able to get some shots with this camera just shooting at a quarter of a second. Um, and they should be relatively, uh, relatively stable you know, uh, non-blurry. Also is gonna come in really handy when I pop on that longer lens that we brought with us today, the 100 to 300 equivalent 200 to 600 lens, because you really want that additional image stabilization when you're shooting with, with longer lenses, because you've got, you know, you've got a little bit of shake going on. You can pick up this camera for 899 pounds, 99p. That is for the body only. Uh, it comes with the 1260 for I think an additional 150 pounds. I think that's somewhere around the region of 1049. And there's also a kit that will be available that comes with the, I believe it's the 12 to 140 lens. And that one is slightly more expensive. Uh, again, I can't remember what that is, but we'll leave you the pricing details below. And we'll also link you guys to the products in the description in the event you wanna get any more information or have a closer look. I love springtime because I love daffodils and it's getting warmer. 
and my hands don't get so cold when I'm shooting. But even if they did, I don't think I'd have to worry too much with this camera because I love the deep grips they have on, uh, on these Panasonic cameras. It's really good. My finger hangs off the bottom a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Another thing I've actually noticed about the, the differences between this camera and the G80 is the viewfinder, though it is the same 2.36 million dot uh, viewfinder with the same 7.4, well, 0.74 magnification factor is actually fully encased in silicone now. And it's actually, I mean, I wear glasses, but even as a glasses wearer, it's a very comfortable thing to, uh, to hold to my eye. And, you know, the, the viewfinder being the same, it doesn't really bother me that much. Uh, you get great detail with even 2.36 million dots. And now I know there are cameras now that well exceed the 3 million dot uh, sort of benchmark. But uh, it's really, it's, it's great and it's perfect and it's all you really need for this camera to be able to see what you're composing. And I believe the field of view is basically 100%. So can't really fault the viewfinder on this camera. I'm a big fan. Uh, something else, bam. We've also got uh, this like built-in Cobra flash situation. Watcha! How good it is, I don't really know. And we're probably not gonna get an opportunity to use it today um, just because it's just such a nice day, but I'm not gonna complain about that. So we're just shooting some 4K 25P footage of these uh, flamingos. I've switched over to the 100-300 lens and I'm currently using the 100 end of that. So technically in 35 mil equivalency, this is a 200 mil lens uh, at the moment. Um, something to note about this camera is now we have 4K 30, which I believe previously we only had up to 4K 25P. Um, so that's, a, that's a, a nice new addition. Something else I want to mention about the video feature of this camera as well is V-Log now comes included with the camera. So that's a, that's, a, that's a big addition mainly because on previous models and other Panasonic models you've actually had to pay for the inclusion of V-Log. Uh, and that's going to be great, again, for content creators. Uh, another step forward for Panasonic in creating a camera that is just a, an all-around content creators, photographers, you know, uh, tool. So, I mean, thus far, this thing is, is, is checking all the boxes. It might very well be the camera that I've been complaining about for the last two years uh, and have inadvertently stumbled upon. I'm just taking some, uh, some 1080 footage uh, at 60 frames a second of these flamingos and, and crows eating over here, just so you guys can, can get a feel of what you can achieve with this camera. Um, shooting it at 60 frames now. Uh, a new feature of this camera that the previous model didn't have is we can now shoot up to 120 frames per second. So I'm gonna also shoot some full HD 120 FPS footage and show you that too. So came back inside because Ben realized that this would be a better area in which to test out higher ISOs. Uh, just because there's, well, light's a little bit more sparse in here. Um, so, what do we got here, guys? Red-eyed tree frog. Pretty cool little amphibian. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just taking photos of these guys, and my settings are currently, I'm set at ISO 6400 and 160th of a second. I mean, they're barely moving, so I don't really even need to be um, at ISO 6400 probably could crank it down to 3200 but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of what the noise and the grain looks like at, at that level of ISO. I probably wouldn't go above that in any sort of shooting scenario and I'd find other ways to compensate uh, in terms of trying to expose my image correctly. Um, when I shoot this image here this seems to be a bit better 1 50th of a second at ISO 6400 uh, and we'll give you a, a peek at what that uh, image sort of looks like. Um, again, shooting down to a 50th of a second, you're starting to use some more of that, uh, some of that in-body image stabilization is actually starting to come in handy. Um, I might actually, if I just click onto manual here, I'm gonna crank my, uh, I'm gonna crank this down to, that's a second. If I go down to, what, a quarter of a second or something? Let's see what that looks like. 
Um, another thing I am just playing with while I'm here is the macro capabilities of the camera. Uh, I can focus very close. I mean, I'm focused on this, uh, this little frog here, this tree frog, and all of his little fingers that are stuck to the glass. One of the things I appreciate about this camera, and uh, it's not unique to this camera, but it brings up the um, sort of that focusing aid where you know, it gives you kind of a 100% crop of the image and uh, focus peaking on this camera is, is really good as well. So that's really helping me uh, to achieve the, uh, the focus that I want. And again, uh, focus wheel is smaller than the, uh, than the zoom wheel on this lens, which helps me uh, determine when I'm looking through the EVF, what exactly I'm changing the settings of so that I don't change my composition on accident rather than trying to hunt for focus. Um, yeah, really appreciate that. EVF is, again, 2.36 million dots, and that is more than sufficient for, for my purposes. So I've set the camera up with back button focus, as you do, and it's just it's so quick. Like, I'm gonna see if you guys can hear this. It's probably, I mean, I'm using a much longer lens as well, and I'm holding the camera right up to the lav mic and it just finds focus like just so quick. I think it's something like 0.07 seconds is the, uh, the number that Panasonic have thrown out there, but uh, rarely do you come across a camera that you have uh, this quick of an autofocus with, and it's uh, surprisingly, oh, I don't say surprisingly, it's, it's very accurate as well. Um, something I've also come to expect from Panasonic. You're doing a weird dance there, dude. Uh, in terms of frame rate, I've got to be completely honest with you guys. I don't actually know the frame rate that this camera shoots at. Uh, if I use it in high continuous mode, um, I don't know. Sounds pretty fast to me. I know that it's, you know, it's as per usual, it's much quicker when you're shooting. Uh, in single autofocus mode than when you're shooting in continuous autofocus. What I do know is the previous model, the G80, gave you something like six frames per second with continuous autofocus, which is totally respectable. And even if it's the same, because a lot of the stats between this camera and that camera are very similar, uh, that's still a perfect, that's a great frame rate for a camera at this price, you know, in terms of an entry level, you know, sort of offering. Uh, I believe single autofocus frame rate on the previous camera was nine frames per second. I mean, I don't know what you're doing that you need more than nine frames per second, you know, so you should be perfectly fine. So, uh, I think one of the imperative questions we need to ask ourselves when talking about this camera is, is it going to be a good vlogging camera? And I think the answer to that question is a definitive yes. Uh, I've got the camera set up right now. I'm filming in 1080 at 25p, just so the audio matches up with our uh, A camera. Um, and something to keep in mind is the audio you're hearing now is coming from the onboard mic and Ben will be switching back and forth uh, to our Rode lav mic which is connected to our A7S II over there to give you an idea of what the different audio quality is like. We're not expecting big things from an onboard mic but it's always good to have that comparison. Uh, great thing about this camera is, I mean it's a, it's a little bigger than usual, my arm's starting to burn already, but we do have face detect so uh, looks to me to be doing a pretty good job. I can look at myself on the uh, on the tilty flippy screen, also a huge bonus, and it seems to be doing a great job of tracking my face as I'm moving, and the in-body image stabilization is also a big deal as well. Five axis in-body IBIS, uh, and it is a, it's, a, it's a dual stabilized camera, and what I mean when I say that is we have five axis in the camera body, and there's also image stabilization coming from the lens, which I'm currently using the 12 to 60 at 12, so you should be viewing me at about 24 mils right now. Um, I'm about to walk off into no man's land here, but that should give you a pretty good idea of, uh, of the vlogging capabilities of this camera. Hi, Ben. <laughs> So we've come over to one of the main attractions here at the Slimbridge Wetland Center, and that is the Otters. Now, uh, a lens like this 100 to 300 really shines in this type of scenario, and so does this tilty flippy angle screen, because it means I can hold it above the enclosure, not get any of the glare, see what I'm shooting at through the LVF, 
and also, you know, the 100 to 300 is a, it's a small lens on a micro four thirds camera, but because we have that two times crop factor, extremely useful. It's a 200 to 600. So you'll see some of the images I captured. I can get right up close to those otters uh, and I have no problem getting great image quality out of this camera uh, at this time of day either. So very versatile setup and really useful in, uh, in a scenario like this and also in a wildlife scenario. This is something that if you were hiking deep into the mountains or if you were on a long, you know, backpack or something like that, you can carry this thing around. And I mean, the camera itself is very light, but the lens for the focal length that it gives you uh, is, yeah, it weighs almost nothing. Versatile setup, really enjoying it, like the otters. Uh, we're gonna go and see if we can use this lens to hunt down some kingfishers in the kingfisher hide on the other side of the center. So we came to the Kingfisher hide at the, uh, at the wetland center here. Uh, and I didn't actually expect to see anything today, but there is a female Kingfisher sitting in the pond over there that uh, one of the gentlemen inside spotted. It was a really good find because she is buried in the, in the bushes over by the reeds by where they're nesting. Um, it's, uh, it's quite difficult to get a photo of her, but I did sh manage to, to capture a couple. And what you'll see is I'm using the, the full extent of the focal range uh, on this camera. It's, you know, I'm shooting at something like 600 mil um, handheld. Uh, keep that in mind. So really using that image stabilization to try and capture what I can of this bird. And we'll try and crop in on the, uh, on the image of the bird when we, get the, uh, when we get the camera back, just to give you an idea. Um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good test for this camera, really pushing the lens, really pushing the image stabilization on the camera, uh, and really pushing the new, you know, the detail of that 20.3, 20 20.4 megapixel sensor that we're using now. This will give you a very good idea uh, of what, you know, what a real test sort of looks like for, for this camera at the, uh, the furthest extent of its ability. Um, we are now going to cruise back, get some lunch, uh, and later on I want to discuss the live composite mode, which is also a new feature on this camera. And the live composite mode is that it's, uh, it's sort of a, a digital ND filter, if you will. You can see the longer exposure photos develop over time via the live viewfinder, and we've got a location in mind for, for trying that. Um, yeah, thus far, really happy and really impressed with the, with the G90. So, we've come to the, uh, <laughs> I don't know, what's this called? Curtain ship graveyard, uh, and as you can see, the thing that I'm actually lying on, and that thing over there is a uh, is a boat or a ship, um, and these things have like the banks of the Severn erode over time, and these things fill up with silt, and then they get stuck like this, and uh, it's actually a pretty cool location. Now, the time of day and where we are, the light's gone pretty flat, but uh, I thought it would be a good place to come and. Well, if it was moodier, okay, just picture that there are some clouds and some moving water. Uh, what we would do is we would use that live composite mode and we would probably try and take a, uh, you know, some kind of a, like a long exposure shot and get some of that smooth water, smooth sky sort of, uh, sort of action. It's a little bit flat though, so I don't know. I may, I may give it a whirl, I may not give it a whirl. Um, but a couple things else I wanted to mention on the camera uh, as we're sort of getting towards the end of our video today is that it has all the features that you would expect on a, a new uh, Micro Four Thirds camera in terms of things like monochrome on all the different um, sort of profile picture settings. So you've got a ton of different options uh, in terms of, uh, of that kind of functionality. Just a note on battery life. So this camera takes the same battery as the previous model, the G80. I think it's a, it's a 1200 ma battery. I think it's called a BLC-12 or something. And the one on this one is a, a BLC-12E. And the one on the previous model is like a BLC-12PP or something like that. I don't know if that really matters to you. But I'm pretty sure they're interchangeable. Um, 
The only thing I've noticed with the battery, now it's done okay for us today. I wouldn't say we've done anything really intensive in terms of shooting, but I'm on my last bar right now. Um, we did record, you know, little bits of video, maybe shot some images. I was shooting on high continuous for most of the day because animals are kind of erratic. So you kind of want to, you know, maybe you get a really good shot in there. Maybe you don't, but you kind of want to just keep on shooting rather than using a single shot. Uh, and yeah, I'm on my, I'm on my last bar. You're supposed to get 340 around that shots out of a, a single battery. Now there are power save settings on the camera, some of which I set up earlier so that it'll it'll turn off when you're not really, you know, paying attention when you're not really using it, kind of like a, like a power save mode type thing. And you're supposed to be able to extend battery life to 800 shots per battery. Um, but the end of it is it's a micro four thirds camera, smaller body, uh, smaller battery, uh, which means they are a little bit inexpensive as well. So you're just going to have to buy a couple extra batteries if you plan on shooting with this thing uh, intensively throughout the course of a day. Of course, there will be the option of a hand grip for this camera with which you can use uh, an additional battery as well. So you'll extend your uh, you'll extend your battery life by by two. Um, but yeah, battery life isn't really that impressive, but I wasn't really expecting much. Something else I want to note about the camera, I'm a little disappointed about the fact that we're not using USB-C uh, inputs yet. We still have this micro or mini USB uh, charging port, but you can charge the camera with that port while you're on the move. So that's useful for anybody who likes to use things like battery power uh, packs and stuff. You'll be able to charge directly from one of those things or just plug it into your car. Um, I think I spoke about it earlier. It has a headphone jack now, which is great. It means you can monitor your audio uh, and it has the mic jack. That is a first for this line of camera. Uh, the G80 didn't have that. Um, so this is, like I said earlier at 899, probably the best sub 1000 pound uh, video camera uh, in terms of like a mirrorless rig that, that you can get. Uh, I would have thought at the moment. Um, it, I think it checks all the boxes, actually, if I'm honest. I can't think of in anything that it's that it's wanting at this point. So, yeah, pretty impressed. I would definitely go ahead and, and check this one out. If you can live without the, uh, the headphone jack, though, and without 120 FPS recording, the G80 might be your bag. And that one now is something like 749, I think, currently. You might even be able to get a... a a kit set up with that one for a sub 800 pounds. So the G80, uh, still a great camera in 2019. It was a great camera in 2018. The latest model, not that much more expensive and relatively future proof, also has all the features on it. Definitely worth a consider uh, in 2019. Thanks for joining us. We've had a really good day today. Uh, thanks to Panasonic for lending us this camera. If you're interested in this camera, definitely check out our website. We'll leave links to the camera in the bio, I'm sure there'll be some uh, some promotional offers upon release. If you wanna check out Slimbridge uh, Wetland Center as well, we will leave their information in the bio. Great day out for the family and the kids. So if you're located in Gloucestershire or our neighboring counties, you definitely wanna go and check that out. Uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for joining us. See ya.